What's going on, besties? Today we're going to be talking about the ECG rhythms of sinus rhythms. Let's get started. Normal sinus rhythms is the most common cardiac rhythm that you're going to see, and typically it's observed in healthy individuals on a daily basis. Its heart rate should be between 60 to 100 beats per minute. This kind of rhythm indicates that that sinoatrial node is functioning as the primary pacemaker. The assumption here is that the SA node is initiating the atrial depolarization under normal conditions. For a rhythm to be classified as normal sinus, it must maintain a regular pattern, known as regularly regular. And this is verified by the measurement of our R to R segments. So using calipers or a piece of paper, you can mark and measure from the start of one R wave to the next star wave, and then continue that measurement all the way down your six second strip to ensure that there's consistency between each R wave interval. Although slight variations over time are normal, abrupt changes from B to B indicate that we have some kind of irregularity. Additionally, for a rhythm to be considered sinus, P waves must be present with a consistent P to QRS ratio of one to one. That means each P wave must be followed by a QRS complex all the way down our six second strip. It should be synchronized as well as orderly. Another thing is that our P wave needs to be upright from our isoelectric lines. Remember we talked about that imaginary line that runs through our strip. If we see any variations in that P wave's appearance, then we're probably looking at a different kind of rhythm. Next up, our PR interval should be normal, ranging anywhere from 0.12 to 0.20 seconds, which corresponds to the width of about three to five small boxes. Additionally, our QRS complex needs to be narrow and normal, which means it needs to be less than 0.12 seconds. If our QRS complex does exceed the width of our three small boxes, then we call our QRS complex big, wide, and ugly. Lastly, we should not see any early beats or missing beats. This rhythm really is textbook, and it describes what we should see when it comes to a standard healthy heart rhythm. It typically presents with no signs or symptoms, and it doesn't require any interventions or treatment. Such a rhythm indicates the heart is functioning appropriately, efficiently circulating blood throughout the body without any disturbances. So sinus bradycardia mirrors normal sinus rhythms in every aspect except when it comes to the heart rate. In sinus bradycardia, the rate is less than 60 beats per minute. Apart from the slower rate, all other characteristics align with a normal sinus rhythm. The rhythm remains regularly regular. Our P wave is going to be present before each QRS complex and upright. Our PR interval and our QRS complex should remain within normal, and we're not going to see any abnormal beats. By meeting these criteria, we can confirm that a diagnosis of sinus bradycardia is present, distinguished by that reduced heart rate. So what's interesting is that sinus bradycardia can be normal in some healthy individuals, especially athletes due to their enhanced cardiovascular efficiency. However, it can also arise from various pathological conditions or external factors. Additional causes can include sick sinus syndrome, myocardial infarction, and the effects of certain types of drugs and toxins like we see with calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, and digoxin. We may also see environmental factors such as hypothermia or even hypoglycemia. Not every person who experiences this rhythm is going to be symptomatic. However, if they are symptomatic, they might experience things like a slow pulse rate, episodes of syncope or near syncope, fatigue, dizziness, lightheadedness, shortness of breath, confusion, or even chest pain. These symptoms, particularly when they are severe, can diminish quality of life and hinder physical activity. So when it comes to treatment, it's really dependent on how severe and what the underlying cause is. Asymptomatic and mild cases may not require treatment, while more severe instances follow the Advanced Cardiac Life Support ACLS, algorithm for bradycardia, which includes our first action, which would be administering atropine. We give one milligram every three to five minutes, up to three milligrams total. If atropine is ineffective, you may see transcutaneous pacing, which are just pads that are put on the patient while they're awake to help maintain the heart rhythm. As always, this is really uncomfortable, so make sure that you give them some pain medication so that they can tolerate it. You may see additional things like dopamine and epinephrine infusions in case we need to again manage and stabilize that heart rate if all else fails. So next up we have sinus tachycardia, and that is defined primarily by the heart rate exceeding 100 beats per minute. 
It's important to note that if the heart rate exceeds 150 beats per minute, we're looking at something else. This is not a sinus tachycardia. Think of something else. For instance, our ECG rhythm strip that we have here is about 120 beats per minute. I'm simply just gonna count the R waves. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 times 10, it gives us 120 beats per minute. As we learned in our previous video, typically we divide the total amount of small boxes by 1500 in order to find our heart rate. However, we will make it easier when it comes to education about how to identify these rhythms by adding up the total R waves and multiplying it by 10. So let's talk about some important characteristics. Again, the rhythm is going to be regularly regular. Our P waves, we're gonna have a P wave before every QRS complex, and they also should be upright from our isoelectric line. Our PR interval and our QRS complex should remain within normal. And of course, we should not see any abnormal beats when it comes to this rhythm. Causes typically arise from a compensatory response to bodily conditions like decreased volume as well as catecholamine response due to stress. You may even see medications being an issue, which could be caffeine, nicotine, any kind of illicit drugs like we see with cocaine and methamphetamines, anticholinergics, as well as beta blocker withdrawal. Signs and symptoms typically remain the same like we see in sinus bradycardia, except in this instance, we're gonna see a rapid pulse rate. So with sinus tachycardia, we don't usually move into the immediate advanced interventions with these kind of rhythms. Often simple measures like fluid administration can effectively manage this condition. Next up, we have sinus arrhythmia, particularly respiratory sinus arrhythmia, which is a natural variation of the heart rate that occurs during the breathing cycle. This particular rhythm is more pronounced in children and most commonly seen in young, healthy individuals and is generally considered normal, reflecting the heart's ability to adapt to changes in physiological demands. So when the lungs inhale, the diaphragm contracts and it pulls downward. At the same time, the muscles between the ribs contract and pull upwards. This ultimately increases the size of the thoracic cavity and decreases the pressure found inside. Because of this, the heart rate is going to increase, allowing more blood to flow back to the heart from the veins, increasing our venous return. Conversely, during exhalation, right, the heart rate is going to slow down. As you exhale, the pressure in the chest is going to slightly increase. Venous return to the heart is going to decrease and the heart doesn't have to beat as quickly. So the autonomic nervous system regulates this process through the vagus nerve, which controls heart rate among other functions. During inhalation, that vagal nerve or parasympathetic activity is going to decrease, which speeds up the heart rate. During exhalation, that vagal activity is going to increase, which is going to slow down the heart rate. It's important to remember that our vagus nerve follows that parasympathetic pathway, which is our rest and digest. So it's going to do the opposite depending on if it is being stimulated or not. This modulation helps optimize gas exchange during respiration. It's going to improve heart efficiency and is an indicator of a healthy cardiovascular system. So the heart rate typically falls within the normal range of 60 to 100 beats per minute. So if we were to count this six second strip, we would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have about 70 beats per minute. And just like with normal sinus rhythms, our P wave is going to be upright in our isoelectric line, and it's gonna be before every QRS complex. Our PR interval, as well as our QRS complex should be within normal, and we're not going to see any abnormal beats. Despite these consistencies, the rhythm shows noticeable variability. Measurements between beats may appear regular at some points, but then show prolongation, creating a pattern that fluctuates slightly. Since sinus arrhythmia is typically a benign and physiological response, it doesn't usually require any kind of treatment. However, the approach may vary slightly if the patient is symptomatic or linked to any kind of underlying conditions. We're most likely going to monitor the patient. We want to address any kind of underlying condition, and we may even advise some kind of lifestyle adjustment. For those who may experience discomfort or anxiety, we might talk to them about relaxation techniques, stress management, as well as ensuring adequate 
adequate hydration may also be a recommendation for these kinds of patients. And then lastly, we have sinus pause, which is also known as sinus arrest because it disrupts what would otherwise be a normal sinus rhythm. In some cases, you'll notice a significant interruption in the rhythm. Essentially, you're gonna notice a gap in between some of your P and QRS complexes. I like to think of it as we've been ghosted by one of our complete complexes. During a sinus pause, the heart rhythm is regular and becomes variable due to that interruption in the conduction system. The P waves are typically present except during the pause, which defines the nature of the sinus arrest. If a P wave is present without interruption, then we're probably looking at something else that does not qualify as a sinus pause or arrest. So what I mean is to say is that if we had a P wave here with no QRS complex behind it, we're probably looking at a different kind of rhythm. Despite these abnormalities, the PR interval is going to remain within normal limits and the QRS complex width is going to be narrow and normal. This rhythm can be caused by a number of reasons. The autonomic nervous system, which controls involuntary bodily functions, including our heart rate, can cause excessive stimulation when it comes to our vagus nerve, leading to a decrease in that SA node impulse generation. This is often seen in response to physiological stimuli, such as gagging, vomiting, or intense emotional stress. If you've ever taken care of a patient who was straining for a long period of time on the toilet and they suddenly just passed out, you may see a sinus pause or sinus arrest when you're looking at the monitor. So when we talk about intrinsic SA node dysfunction, we're talking about the SA node maybe having some kind of intrinsic abnormalities due to aging, ischemic damage, inflammatory conditions, or even degenerative diseases that can ultimately affect the generation of regular impulses. Again, certain medications, particularly those affecting heart rate and rhythm, such as beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and antiarrhythmics, can suppress the SA node's pacemaker activity. We may also see imbalances of key electrolytes that regulate heart function, such as potassium, as well as calcium. They can ultimately impair the electrical activity of the SA node. Other causes can include hypoxia, as well as increased vagal tone. Sinus pause or arrest can manifest through various signs and symptoms, such as palpitations, dizziness, lightheadedness due to reduced cardiac output. We may even see syncope if the pause is prolonged, occasional fatigue, and in older adults, we can see confusion or memory issues from transient reduction in the cerebral blood flow. And on rare occasions, ischemic related chest pain may occur. Treatment for sinus pause or arrest aims to address its underlying causes as well as the severity. In some cases, we may need to adjust medications depending on if that's the cause. And in other cases, we may have to implant a permanent pacemaker if we see repeating episodes. So let's do some practice in identifying these rhythms. So first up, we have the following rhythm. We want to look to see if the rhythm is regular or irregular. So we're going to measure between each R wave. And just by doing just a quick glance at this, it looks like this rhythm is actually going to be regular. Next up, we wanna see the heart rate. So typically what we wanna do whenever we have a regular rhythm is we want to count the number of small boxes in between each R to R segment and then divide that by 1500. But in order to save us just a little bit of time, I'm gonna go ahead and count them. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have approximately 80 beats per minute. Next up, we wanna look at our P wave. So do we have a P wave present before each QRS complex and are they upright? So if we take a look, this one's good. We get a QRS, upright QRS, upright QRS, so on and so forth, all the way down our six second strip. So we can say that this follows that one-to-one -one ratio. So next up, we want to measure our PR interval and our QRS complex. So I do this by counting the small boxes. So we're gonna start right here at the beginning of our P wave until right here before our QRS complex in order to get our PR interval. So we have one, two, three, four, like four and a half boxes here. So four and a half boxes multiplied by 0 0.04 is going to give us 0 0.18 seconds, which is still normal for our PR interval. Next up, we're gonna measure our QRS complex. So again, we're gonna start at the beginning of our QRS until right about here at the end of our QRS. So we have about one, maybe one and a half boxes for our QRS complex. So 1.5 boxes times 0.04 is going to give us 0.06 
leading us to believe that we have a narrow and normal QRS complex. And then lastly, we wanna to look to see if we have any abnormal beats. So based on looking at our six second strip, I don't see anything that's abnormal, so we can go ahead and put none in that category. So based on our six step process that we have, whenever it comes to identifying underlying rhythms, we can see here that all of this criteria meets our normal sinus rhythm, meaning that we have a normal sinus rhythm. So we're gonna move a little bit faster. Let's take a look at our next rhythm. So starting with our rhythm, if we were to measure from our R to R complex, it looks pretty regular here as I can see. So we're gonna go ahead and call this rhythm regular. Now we need to look at our heart rate. So if we count that, we got one, two, three, four. So our heart rate is approximately 40 beats per minute. Do we have a P wave before every QRS? This one's a little bit hard to see because it's off the screen, but as we can see here, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, yep. We absolutely do, so we do have a one-to-one -one ratio. Now we need to look at our PR interval and our QRS complex. So as we can see here, we have approximately from here, we got one, two, three, four, five little boxes. So 0 0.04 times five boxes is going to give us 0 0.2 seconds. So now we wanna take a look at our QRS complex. So what do we have going on here? So we have about one, one and a half boxes that I can see. So 0 0.04 times 1.5 boxes gives us 0 0.06 seconds. And lastly, we wanna to look to see if we have any abnormal beats. Based on everything that I can see here, everything's pretty consistent. So we can go ahead and say that there are none. So out of everything I can see, everything's pretty much normal, except right here, our heart rate is a little bit slow, right? We know with our sinus rhythms, they should be between 60 to 100 beats per minute in order for them to be regular, normal sinus rhythms. So here, this one's a little bit slow, so we know that we're dealing with a sinus bradycardia, simply based on the fact that we have a heart rate of 40 beats per minute. Taking a look at our next strip, we can see that this one's a little bit fast, right? But if we were to measure in between each R to R complex, it pretty much remains consistent all the way through. So we can call this rhythm regular. Now we need to figure out the heart rate. So again, I'm just gonna count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we have a heart rate of approximately 130 beats per minute. Do we have a P wave for every QRS complex? And is our P wave always upright? We most certainly do. We have an upright P wave, QRS, upright P wave, QRS, so on and so forth, all the way down to the line. So we have a one to one ratio when it comes to our P waves. Next up, we wanna measure our PR interval and our QRS complex. So taking a look at this, our PR interval looks like it's approximately one, two, three-ish boxes. So we have three boxes times 0 0.04 and that gives us 0 0.12 seconds that's still in normal and now we want to look at our qrs complex so we've got approximately one maybe one and a half boxes hard to tell but maybe one to one and a half so we've got 1.5 boxes times 0 0.04 and that is going to give us 0 0.6 seconds. And then lastly, we want to take a look to see if we have any abnormal beats. Based on what we can see here, everything looks pretty regular. We don't see anything that's out of the ordinary, so we can go ahead and list none. So everything meets the sinus rhythm criteria. The only thing that's a little bit different is the fact that we have a really high heart rate. So based on our SA node, the heart rate should be between 60 to 100 beats per minute. This one's a little bit higher, but it's less than 150. So we can call this rhythm sinus tachycardia. So this rhythm looks a little bit interesting, right? So here we can see, yep, it looks pretty regular-ish, but then look, it becomes a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter, and then it goes, becomes prolonged again. So with this kind of rhythm, we're gonna call this irregular. This is an irregular rhythm. So we wanna go ahead and count our R to R complexes. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got approximately 60 beats per minute. Do we have an upright P wave for every QRS complex? We absolutely do. Upright QRS, upright QRS, upright QRS, so on and so forth, all the way down. So we can say that this has a one to one ratio for sure. And then now we wanna look at our PR interval and our QRS complex. So taking a look here, we've got one, two, three, four-ish boxes. So four boxes times 0 0.04 is going to give us 0 0.16 seconds. And then now we wanna look at our QRS complex. So we've got about one, two, approximately two boxes for this one. 
So two boxes times 0 0.04 is going to give us 0 0.08 seconds for our QRS complex. And then lastly, do we have any abnormal beats? Nope, absolutely not. Everything looks normal. So here we've got something that's a little bit different, right? So we have 60 beats per minute, which means it falls within that normal sinus range. Everything else is normal, except the fact that our rhythm is irregular. There's only one sinus rhythm that is irregular, and that is our sinus arrhythmia. Because as we know, our heart rate beats a little bit faster during inspiration, and it slows down during expiration. So let's take a closer look at our final practice problem. So what do we have here? Well, it looks like we have something a little abnormal here, right? Something should have happened here and they didn't. It looks like we get ghosted, right? So let's take a look at the rest of the rhythm outside of this. So if we were to measure in between these two R complexes and between these two R complexes and compare them together, we would see that we actually have a regular rhythm, regular rhythm. So now we just need to figure out what is our heart rate. So our heart rate should be, this is the time that I would absolutely use the uh, divide by 1500 because we are missing a beat right here. So we're going to go ahead and count our boxes. So we have one big box, two big box, three big box, so that's 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 1500 divided by 18 is going to give us approximately 83 beats per minute. Do we have an upright P wave for every QRS complex? We absolutely do. Upright P wave, QRS, upright P wave, QRS. We have no P waves in between here. That's fantastic. Upright P wave, QRS, so on and so forth, all the way down. So we can say that we have a one to one ratio. Next up, we wanna look at our PR interval and our QRS complex. So here we've got approximately one, two, three, four, five boxes. So five boxes times 0.04 is going to give us 0 0.20 seconds, which is a normal, that's fantastic. And then with our QRS complex, we have about one and a half boxes, 1.5 times 0 0.04 is going to give us 0 0.06 seconds. So then the last thing we want to consider is, is there any abnormal beats? Well, yes, we absolutely have an abnormal beat here, right? Because we have this prolongation without anything that occurred here. So we have what we want to call an extended pause. So based on everything that we have here, we have what looks to be a sinus rhythm. The only issue is, is that we have this extended pause. And with that, we know that we're going to have a normal sinus rhythm with sinus pause. Anytime you have this kind of rhythm, whether it's sinus pause or arrest, you always want to name the underlying rhythm. So based on the underlying rhythm, we have a regular rhythm that's 79 beats per minute that meets all this criteria. So we know that it falls within normal sinus. The only issue is, is this extended pause making this a normal sinus rhythm with sinus pause. I hope that this video was helpful in understanding how to identify normal sinus rhythms. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Head over to nursechungstore.com where there's a ton of additional resources in order to help you ace those EKGs. And as always, I'm gonna catch you in the next video. Bye.